Welcome back to Panoia Crossover. PJ here, Marky Mark there. Let's go to Marky Mark to tell us what's up in the NBA. All right. Our favorite segment to end it all off. Mm -hmm. What's up in the NBA? What Let's is up? Through. What, what is, is up? up in the NBA? I have no idea. Some NBA recent topic and news. Let's go straight up to the first one is, mm -hmm. should the Clippers basically trade DeAndre or Austin Rivers and just disband the whole team right now because there's a lot of things that just happened to them recently. Injury mm -hmm. really just kicked them off. And I think that at this point, you got, they got to think about it. What can, what's the most that they can get out of these players before really? Because at this point, with the injury to Blake Griffin missing two months, Patrick Beverly out for the year. What else? I don't think they're gonna make a run in this West, but it's so deep. Every every team in this in this you know conference is deep. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get back without your star player like Blake Griffin. And it's funny because should... and it's funny because when Chris Paul left, I think there was the intention like, oh, we'll show Chris Paul that we can still fight and we Actually, can still. Actually, in the beginning of the year, that's yeah. what they were five and two, be and they had their starters like. Milos, mm -hmm. Danilo, Patrick Beverly, yeah. Blake, and John. They were actually a really good defensive team at the beginning of the year when they had their players. But, but injury, injury. injury just came in and just destroyed the whole team. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? What, what should they do with the team? Should they disband? Should they trade whatever asset they have, which is DeAndre mm -hmm. and Austin Rivers, to get some picks, maybe some young players? What do you think they should do? I think, yeah, like, like we mentioned in the last episode, I think they should just really just jump off the boat. Burn the bridge, jump off the boat, really start new. Start new. Because, that's, start new. because now I think most people are more interested in the Lakers now because of Lonzo and just how young, the, yeah. the young court that they had those pieces scoring. I think it's time for uh, the Clippers. To, it does make sense mm -hmm. to ride the boat. Like, you know, let Lakers have all the glory while they continue just to rebuild now because mm -hmm. even with having DeAndre as Blake and Blake as their one two punch, they can't get far in the, in, in the, in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And if they were to trade or DeAndre, does DeAndre even have any good prospects? Do people even want DeAndre right now That's in this the league? Question. Yeah. yeah. What do you What do you think about DeAndre's position it, right now? It, it, he's a one-dimensional player, like yeah. everybody says, a good shot blocker, a mm -hmm. good rebounding. But other than that, it's just the way the league is running right now. Every if you think about it, every big man now that are emerging in the league are are multi are are multi in terms of multi talented. They have many facets to their game. They can do a lot of things besides uh, scoring or rebounding. And that's the thing where the NBA is going now. All the big men are so skilled that if you're one-dimensional, like the New Orleans, Andre, like just looking at look at, the, look at the rising star players right now, the yeah. bigs. Uh, like you said, uh, Davis and, and, and Cousins. They can handle the ball. They can shoot. They yep. can post up. They can play defense. They can pass. Not only that, but if you look at other young, core, uh, young stars in the league, like Towns, uh, Porzingis, uh, Jokic, uh, these are players that can do so many different things. Mm -hmm. Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, these are young, people, you know, big men right now that are just define, redefining the way we we, we value big men nowadays. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the person that's in the middle of this is Marc Gasol. He was a skilled big man, but he's an, the aging big man right now. He's in the middle of this where, and you have, you know, Drummond that's actually expanding his game, expanding his range in terms of how he plays. He's yeah. more of a passing big man now too, not just rebounding. So it's like and, adapt or die, basically. Yeah. And do you think DeAndre yeah, think can DeAndre, adapt? Or? I think he's, he's like a Dwight <laughs> Howard kind of player where mm -hmm. he didn't adapt at all. And because he didn't adapt, his, the, their value in terms of you know how, how much do teams need them in order to win games or to be a playoff contender or to win championship mm -hmm. is not as valuable. If you look at like a team like... Um, Cleveland, or you look at a team like Golden State Warriors, their center are literally not the main piece or the main reason why they're a championship team. Mm -hmm. And I think that most teams are leaning towards that way. But uh, if you have a talented big, if you have a big man, they have to be talented, or they don't have to. Or if you want to build around, a, you know, a team that doesn't have that talented big man, then you have you got to look at like teams like Warriors or Cleveland. Mm -hmm. But so do you think DeAndre is going to be uh, scrapped? To the side, like I don't think he's had, been, he or do you think as much team value? Yeah, okay. And, and and my question is too is not just the players personal, but do you think that the Cl the Clippers should move on from Doc Rivers? Yeah, I think yeah. Last episode we yeah you mentioned that as well, and I feel like Doc Rivers should yeah should go. Yeah. Just the whole culture should go. Like it should be a new culture, and it's good 
thing too because the the owner of the Clippers is recently new too. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he's letting go of anyone that's like been there for a long time. He's a new owner. He can bring a new perspective, hire new people. And I feel like, yeah, they're going to start over. But again, the draft class, this coming draft class be nice. is nice. Exactly. So tank, Clippers tank. <laughs> Tank, tank, tank. What do you What do you think? What's your personal opinion? You, I just think that wanna... they need to have so they need a better player to build around with, and mm -hmm. I don't think Blake could be that uh, player. Mm -hmm. I've seen him uh, play, and this was his chance to be, you know, the main focus of the team, the main yeah. focal point. The spotlight was and, on him. The spotlight was on him, and he was playing all right. He was playing, you know, mm -hmm. all star level. Uh, it's just that he's very injury prone. I don't think you want to depend on, you want to build a, your team around a star player that is injury prone. Mm. And he's had a lot of knee uh, injuries. It's, he misses for his rookie season because of a knee injury. And now he's, you know, having another setback. And I know it's not his fault, but it's been so fragile his past few years. Mm. His career has just been, and I don't think they should build around a player that is injury prone. And I think this is time for them. To, to, to find someone to build around with. blow that up, is, man. Yeah. But it's the worst to even think you're on a team that sucks or it's yeah. going to tank. How, as true. a player, how do you play? Yeah. Like, guys, we're going to tank. Um, no, I, well, like, the league is trying to find its way to reduce that uh, t tanking mentality, and that's why they did the way that the draft is in terms of possible chances yeah. now are equal for the first five teams. Mm -hmm. But moving on, let's, let's finish go. it Hold off on, with... Yeah. Uh, Talk about thing, another tank. Another <laughs> a <laughs> tank. Yeah. That uh, the the ejection that happened. I know this is his first ejection of his yep. career. He's played over a, a thousand a thousand career games, and this is the first ever he's ever been ejected. Mm -hmm. Do you think that he deserved the ejection or not? Hmm. Well, see, I'm um, I'm gonna side with the referee. I'm a ref I'm biased because I'm a referee. We were, like you referee too sometimes. Yeah. But I referee games, and it's easy. Um, it's easy for players to lose cool. And I feel, I feel that LeBron then, in a sense, has kept his, maintained his composure for how many games? A thousand games? But to see a referee, I don't know how, is, is the referee a veteran referee? I think that's yeah. another. The claim is that this, this is what he said. Yeah. It was a combination of a couple different acts. Mm -hmm. He said, Fitzgerald, this is the, 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 co uh, the referee. Yeah. He told the ESPN uh, reporter. And he said, immediately after the no call, he turned and threw an, uh, an air punch. What's an air punch? I don't know. It's probably it? like, uh, but like, I would eject. Was, Why that, would you throw that? That, punch? that is an, but that's how we, I'm picturing what he's saying. But when you watch the video, he didn't went up to him and like did that right to his face. Oh, so we don't know where the air I punch think came it from. It was, uh, I guess, how he viewed the way uh, LeBron approached him was, not you know, the yeah. way his hand moved. Maybe he felt like that was an air punch. And he also said he aggressively, aggressively charged at me and then used vulgar language. Yeah, I'd be scared though. If I saw a tank like LeBron come after yeah. me, emotionally, I I want him to get away from me. Yeah. I'd call the T. Yeah. But I guess, again, you said one T and then he was ejected. Yeah. So it depends on also what he was saying inside his ear because yeah. there was yeah. verbiage that we'll never know. He, he's a new, he's a new ref. That's one of the the critis, uh, critis, uh, criticism that he that they, he was receiving. He didn't mm. uh, you know the way he treats star players is is different. Like you know he he was the first one to ever do it. And he's like one of the early, like you know, early in his years as a ref. Yeah. So people are criticizing him that he didn't know how to handle it. Because usually when you give someone a tea, you give them time to cool. Yeah. In a sense, right? You don't just give them one and then right after the other, right? Because it, it, the way in the heat of the game, people, you know, emotions get over, and you need to give players time to kind of cool down. Like right? I know they're in the heat of the moment, but you can't just you know decide right away the way they react the first time when you give them a tea and then react. To it, yeah. oh, like it's a whole new different thing, where you have to understand yeah. that people need to time off in terms of it, right? Mm -hmm. But I know like LeBron had a good point as well because this year uh, he he's only averaging five free throws a game, and that's mm -hmm. one thing that five, and he was saying that he's not a jump shooter, and he's saying that a lot of jump shooters nowadays like Harden, Curry are getting a lot more free to the line as opposed to someone who drives in the lane like him and Giannis, mm -hmm. and he's saying that. Um, that there's something there's something that you should look at in terms of because he's mm. one of the hardest to officiate if you watch him the way his body yeah. his build is he's basically like a more mobile and more aggressive Shaq and it's hard because when he gets fouled he kind of brushes it up because of how strong he is yeah so he's he's really I guess I understand his point is that he's not getting calls and and he's just he's so hard to officiate mm. but I think this is a built-in frustration that he's had for a long time because of the fact that He's so big and so strong that he, the way people it doesn't foul matter him, what happens to him. Yeah, the just, way people he yeah. get the way he gets you know treated by the refs. Yeah. He just that 
when you when you are a ref and you're watching and looking for fouls, yeah. it's hard to see when someone just kind of brushes it off and like uh -huh. when he goes to the lane doesn't feel like he ever there was ever a foul mm -hmm. where this clearly is because of the fact that he's just a different he's just a different beast yeah. different tank a different tank in a <laughs> sense all right so again did you uh, we didn't have a clear verdict yes to the objection I think or he no? deserved it yeah. i think he deserved it but i'll it, agree to that as it, well i think it it should send a message to the uh, officiating in terms of how they should give him more respect. Absolutely, and it, yeah. gave, it, it, it spotlighted the issue, yeah. which now the refs will probably look at it, and mm. so it's good that in that respect. Did he get fined? Do you get fined if you eject? Mm, yeah, you get fined oh, okay. when you get ejection. And it well, doesn't... LeBron has money. Yeah, he has, he can cover <laughs> All right, so anything you'd like to say before we end the show? All of that is yeah. that, thank you guys, good luck to uh, the mm -hmm. crossover teams yeah. that are going to Malaysia. You know, shout out to our boys, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, Tyler and Denzel. We have them right there. Uh, oh, it's right there, Tyler. Yeah. True, true, true. Good luck to you guys. Yeah. Coach Rod. Coach Mike. And Coach, Coach Mike. Matt. I hope, I hope you know, for the best for you guys and yeah. win it all. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all I have. Okay. Well, hey, uh, thank you guys for watching once again. Uh, make sure you follow our social media channels, and we'll we'll see you next time. Stay balling. <laughs>